Um, but hello, my name is Katrina. I am the senior environmental educator for EcoMain. Uh, EcoMain is the company that processes your trash and your recycling. So do you put it out on the curb or do you go to a transfer station? Curb. So when it comes from the curb, it drives over to us in Portland, We're right by the Portland airport. And, uh, and there's a trash building and a recycling building. So your trash goes to this building, your recycling goes to this building. We're gonna really focus on recycling today, but I do have a brochure over here of what happens to your trash. The short story is it comes to our building, it gets dumped off, a giant claw comes down to pick it up. Think of that game, you know, with the stuffed animals, the claw game. Yes. And it drops into a hopper, which leads down to the boiler where it burns. So basically it's just like the waiting room and that goes down and it burns for around four hours. It drastically reduces in size and volume from 100% down to 10%, and that's just ash and metal and some glass left over because the metal doesn't burn and the glass doesn't burn. It's not hot enough, it's only about 1800 degrees. And then that ash goes to the landfill. So the, the truck leaves from our building eight to 10 times per 24 hour period, which is really good because that means the ash is so drastically reduced that you'll see it on, on a map, we have 400,000 customers and an incredible amount of those customers bring us or give us their trash. So imagine how many trucks would go to landfill if we didn't burn it down. Uh, one of the reasons we burn it is to make it much smaller. Another reason is to make electricity off of it. So we use the heat from the fire to heat up water to create steam. The steam powers a turbine. The turbine powers a generator and therefore we're creating electricity from your trash and my trash. So it's very interesting. We also are creating pollution, but inside the building is where it's kept. It goes through a very specific pattern or way uh, for the, the gases to move through the building. And they're treated four different ways and then tested on the, on the fifth uh, area to make sure it's clean enough to go out the stack. Uh, and we're really, really good at staying inside our permits uh, and even much less so than we're allowed to. So um, EcoMain in general is taking your trash, making it smaller, making electricity at the same time and also taking your recycling, which is what we're gonna focus on today. Um, so I call this best practices for minimizing contamination within the current recycling market, which sounds a little bit boring. So just think of what do I recycle and why? Um, so in general, this is EcoMain. This is our recycling building, our waste to energy building. The airport is literally right here or so, so a couple miles away. And our waste to energy creates the ash and then that ash goes to our ash fill, kind of like a landfill where all the, uh, the trash stays forever and ever, but it's ash only. So it's much, much um, reduced in size and volume. Our, an our ash fill is gonna stay open until at least 2044. So a very, very long time, and it has been open since 1978. So a very long lived landfill, which is good. Uh, we also take some food waste. Um, I was talking about Manchester School earlier. They have uh, an organization that brings their food waste to us and then from us, we're like a transfer station. We just get it until there's enough of it. And then it's transported up to Exeter, Maine to be anaerobically digested, which is kind of the same idea as composting, turning food waste into something productive again. But instead of making soil out of the food waste, it's making electricity, animal bedding, and fertilizer. So very interesting process. So those are what we do. And these are our 74 towns. You can see Wyndham right here. I didn't want to cover up too many town names, so I didn't put it too close, but we're in Wyndham. Anybody live outside of Wyndham here? New Glasser used that earlier, great. Um, so we have all these towns. We don't have every town, of course, um, in this area, but we have quite a few of them. So we're taking either trash and recycling or trash or recycling from all these very colorful towns here. EcoMain's mission, uh, we want to provide comprehensive, long-term solid waste solutions in a safe, environmentally friendly, responsible, and economically sound manner. We're also a leader in raising public awareness of sustainable waste management. So we have an education department. We also are uh, committed to being very, very safe. That's both uh, safe with our people who work with us and also safe for the environment. So we're not gonna pollute the atmosphere. We're not gonna pollute the groundwater. We're focused on being safe and the, the most fun part for me is that we're a nonprofit. So we're focused on doing the right thing. We're not focused on um, making all the money. So recycling can be tough. And how do you know what to recycle? So we have a lot of information out there. That's part of our education. Uh, we create signage. We do pro programs like this. Uh, we go to town council meetings. I'm in schools. 
people come to us and take a tour. Uh, there's multiple ways that I'm out in the community or the community can come visit us. We have a very fun open house in September too, so mark your calendars for next September. I believe the third week or maybe the fourth week in September. Uh, it's a free open to the public, free breakfast sandwiches, tour of our facility, get to climb on all the big machines, and it's a really funny uh, morning. Um, but this is just one of our posters. We've got the rigid plastic containers labeled one through seven. Those are what we want to recycle. We've got the paper, newspaper, paper bags, magazines, etc. all the paper. Our rule with the paper is if you can rip it, we can take it. We've got your glass bottles and jars, so that means we don't want your light bulbs, we don't want your mirrors, we don't want your mugs from the kitchen. We want your coffee cups and milk and juice and dairy-free broth containers. Does anyone ever have soup in a box? Mm -hmm. Or wine in a box? Or broth in a box? Yeah. Even um, your soy milk. Uh, and almond milk and, and rice milk, any of those milks, they come in this like box and they look kind of waxy. Maybe you look inside and there's a foil lining and you might think, well, can I recycle this or no? And you can, which is really great. So not every place can, but EcoMain can. So make sure you just empty everything out and then give it to us in your recycling bin. We also take all your paperboard, cardboard and tubes. So the tubes inside your paper towels. We can't recycle your paper towels. We can't recycle your toilet paper. Oh but we can recycle the tubes if you'd like to give us those. So any cardboard, large or small, um, even cereal boxes, Cheez-It boxes, you know, things like that. And then all your metal cans and oddly, your pots and your pans. So if your pan at home that you cook with is just too scratched up, it's too rusty, you, you can't use it anymore and you, it's not good enough to donate, then you can give it away. I'm sorry, you can, you can recycle it if, if you can't give it away. Yeah. Copper bottom. Yeah, anything, metal, metal is metal if it's a pan. Yeah. And how about the uh, heavy... Um, Cast iron? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Does it um, have a plastic handle on it? Oh, great question. That was my next point. Yes, you can. Because down the road, they can uh, separate out that, that uh, plastic from the metal or melt it down at such a high heat that it's negligible. Um, if you have the ability to take such a heavy piece, such as your, your um, pan to the um, like a transfer station anywhere, there's one Riverside Recycling in Portland, just thinking that it's such a heavy right. piece that we might not want it through our machines because it might break sure. something. So if you have the opportunity uh, to, to put it in a, a metal bin at a transfer station, that would be the best and choice. Is that the same place where you take paint? Yes. Some, and near the uh, golf course there. Yes, should yeah. be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can also take paint to Maine Hardware, yeah. Home Depot, Lowe's. Oh. Yeah, go to paintcare.org, type in your zip code, and you can find someone probably closer. Will they take it for free? Or they do. They you pay for oh, a fee whenever you buy that paint anyway. Oh. So it's, it's already there. But if, you're, so if you have a paint can and say you painted your kitchen and you took as much as you could, yeah. you can recycle the paint can. This is just if you have paint left over. And you don't want and, to use and it. And you leave the paint in it. Yeah. You do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just leave it um, juicy. You know, just leave it as paint. You know, don't pour cat litter or All right. whatever else in it. Don't leave the top open and let it dry. Yeah. Give that, uh, the paintcare.org website will um, send you to places that can take just the paint in general. They can actually recycle it. Ecomain can't recycle it, but paint care locations can. That's awesome. Yeah, they've and got spe somewhere? special machines. Um, I can tell you at the end for sure. Okay. And batteries go there too, right? They do. Um, remote control batteries yeah. go in the trash can these days. Okay. Lithium ion, like your computer batteries or rechargeable, even hearing aid batteries, mm -hmm. need to go back to hardware stores like Lowe's, Home Depot. Yeah, like I can go to the transfer point. station too. Yeah. <clears throat> but here's our poster just kind of showing some of the things we don't want in your recycling bin. You can compost your food and yard waste if you want to. Otherwise, it's trash. Demolition waste should never be in the recycling bin. Your sharps, propane knives, and um, propane tank, or sharps, knives, and propane tanks, propane knives, um, should not be in the recycling bin because they are, of course, very, very dangerous. There are humans working in the recycling bin. There are humans picking out the trash. You don't want them to get stuck with a needle um, or that for there to be a fire from the propane tank. Diapers and pet waste. I uh, feel bad that I have to say that out loud, but we get a lot of it, unfortunately. Uh, roses, hopes, and uh, ho hoses, robes, and textiles, uh, they get stuck in our machines, uh, so we don't want those. You can, of course, donate anything to Goodwill that is um, uh, a shirt or reusable stuff. Even if it has a rip in it, Goodwill can take it because they can cut that up and make it into rags. And then auto body shops and boat shops, they all kinds of places buy those rags and, and use those. We don't want any styrofoam straws, napkins, or to-go lids. 
Um, one, they're not made out of the right material, or two, they're not a container. Your plastics, they need to be containers, and we can't take anything that's not a container. This here is styrofoam. It does have that wonderful number six on it. So you might think, but it's got a six, I should recycle it. But it's just not something that we can recycle because it is so lightweight. We'd have to amass an incredible amount. Think of just filling this whole room with styrofoam. If we squish it down, it might weigh 100 pounds. So driving that down to uh, Massachusetts or New Jersey, wherever the closest place is, is not really economically feasible, right? So we burn it, make it into electricity, make it very, very small, and put it in the landfill. And of course, we don't want anything bagged. So even if it's easier for you, please do not put your recycling in a bag and then put it on the curb. Because again, those bags might get stuck in our equipment. And also, especially if it's a darker colored bag, our guys who work in the building, they don't know if it's filled with shoes. They don't know if it's filled with cat litter. They don't know if it's filled with perfectly clean recycling. It, it could be anything. And we've opened enough bags to know, mm. don't open another bag. <laughs> so uh, please give us your stuff very loose. So out of the bags. Um, so we're going to talk about how, why recycling is uh, important before we dive into the rest of it. Um, I'm sure you already know that recycling is important, otherwise you might not be here. Uh, but one reason is it's important to save resources. Because yes, a tree can regrow. But how long does it take to regrow? Also, trees are what we call carbon sinks, or they sequester carbon and hold it inside their, their, their tree bodies. And that helps the carbon not be in the atmosphere, which helps raise the temperature. But uh, this top area here, this is a linear model of not recycling, so putting things in the trash. So I need paper. I'm going to go find some trees, because that's where we get paper. Cut them down, put them on a truck, make paper out of them, use them in whatever way we want. We make a book, we write a Christmas card, uh, do some homework on it, and then we put it in the trash can. Well, that truck takes it to the landfill, and we need to make more paper. So where do we go? Back to the trees, truck, make the paper, put it in the trash, put it in the truck, landfill. What do I got to do to make get more paper? Go back. So you see how it's linear? We're constantly going back and forth. Versus down here, we've got our trees on a truck, make the paper, we're going to use it in whatever way we'd like to, recycle it, truck takes it to make it a new paper, it's recycled. New paper, use it, recycle it. Paper, use it, recycle it. So it's a circular pattern. We are not creating greenhouse gases or as much many greenhouse gases here. Uh, we're also re vastly reducing the materials that we're using to make that product. Um, so let's talk about the latest and not so greatest of recycling right now because it was really, really great for a while and it's kind of gone downhill and it's actually user error. So it's, it's you and me and all the 400,000 customers that we have. Uh, the equipment has stayed the same, if not get, getting better in recycling facilities, but the actual stuff that we're getting, the material that we're getting has gotten worse. So a lot of the time recycling uh, has uh, had its ups and downs. Uh, it's often driven by the petroleum market. So think of plastic. When the oil is cheap, it's less expensive to manufacture the, the raw materials. So a brand new milk jug out of raw uh, petroleum, which of course is an oil product that we get from underground. Um, so it's cheaper to make it out of fresh oil instead of recycled material. Uh, but always, always in the past, the markets have come back, except for right now. The markets are still not back yet. We had a um, kind of a slump last year, last September, when China enforced a ban on all paper and all plastics, but we're not going to th really talk about plastics today because our plastics stay in the United States. So they're uh, China banned plastic sent to them, which is a lot of the world, but it doesn't apply to us, but it does apply to our paper. So that's what we're going to talk about. So China said, no more paper. We're not going to take any more paper from anywhere in the world. Not a main thing, not an eco main thing, not even a U.S. thing. Um, and that was because over the last 10 years, they have gotten more and more and more contamination. So if you get a load of bales of recycling and you pay for 100% recycling, but you're only getting 70% recycling and 30% is trash, well, you just kind of wasted 30% of your money, right? Because you're going to have to throw that trash anyway, away anyway. And, um, and honestly, the, sometimes the, 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 uh, the trash um, disposal methods in other countries are not as good and not as clean as they are here. So it's really important to, to make sure the recycling is clean. 
This is just a visual. In 2008, all of our recycling mixed up together combined was about $107 per ton. You know, you see some ups and downs here. And here we are. So $15 a ton, uh, which is, of course is much less than the $107 a ton. So it has gone down. Eventually it will go back up, but um, we kind of need to clean up our game a little bit. This is just an interesting um, slide to show why it's so important that China close their doors and why it's so important that we clean it up now. Because here's our paper and fiber. 55% of the entire world went to China. 45% goes to other places. So a lot of stuff, a lot of paper, and of course a lot of plastic is going to China. And that's where we were sending it. So now 55% has to find other places because they've said, no thank you, no more. And of course, it all comes down to contamination. Another reason is that newspapers are no longer in circulation. So how many still get a newspaper? How many get their information online? I, I personally get my information online because I want to save paper. So that kind of caused an issue with the paper markets too because bales used to be mostly newspaper. Now all the newspaper is gone because we get our information online, so it makes the bale not less quality, but very different makeup. Because it used to be a newspaper bale, now it's a mixed paper bale. So we could have all the sorters we wanted to, except there's a cost, right? So if we can't remove all the contamination, there's going to be some left over, and that leftover is going to go in the bale, and that bale is going to go to the next place, and they're either going to say, yay, it's a great bale, or ooh, that's not a great bale. I don't want to buy from EcoMain anymore. So it's our job at EcoMain to make sure it's as clean as possible. One thing or two things we've done to make sure things are clean is we've slowed down the belt. It used to be three feet per second. Now it might be three and a half or four feet per, feet per second. We've also added more sorters. So it used to be a couple sorters on the line, taking out the cardboard, and we'll talk about that in a second, or the trash and the trash is what we're focusing on at the second. So there used to be a couple sorters doing that, now there's a couple more. So if we get a load, it's got, you know, it's a good load, and it's got this much contamination in it, and we can take out this much, how much is left? So this is going into the bales, so that's not a very good thing. Um, so humans are the only ones that can take out trash. There are machines out there that might suck the plastic bags away, and it might kind of sort things by batting away. Um, anything that's not the materials that we want, but those machines are millions and millions of dollars, and we're a nonprofit, so we don't have the incredible state of the art. We have very, very good machines. We don't have like billionaire machines. So humans are the only ones that can take out the contamination. Also, you would need it's okay. Also, you would need um, a machine to take out the tanglers. You'd need a machine to take out the diapers. You'd need a machine to take out the shoes. You'd need a machine to take out the plastic bag, so you know you need all these machines uh, to do what one machine can. Your hands right here, picking out all the bad stuff. So this is a perfect load of single sort. We've got our plastic containers. We've got our paperboard, Captain Crunch. We've got our cardboard. We've got our paper, and I'm sure there's glass in there. I just can't really pick one out. But if you go to the next slide, this is what we're getting. So can you toggle back for funsies? Yeah. Good stuff, bad stuff. So here, this is a bag that looks like a lot of good recycling. Yay, but it's in a bag. So when this gets pushed up into our machines and goes through our, our, um, our different equipment, that bag is going to break open and that bag is gonna get stuck. This bag right here, we have no idea what's in there. So that's gonna be pulled out and thrown away in the trash can. Um, we also have just a lot of film in general. Uh, there's a coat hanger right here. Um, there's some sort of mesh. It's either wire or, or plastic um, kind of, uh, it looks like a wire fence, but it looks like plastic. So there's a lot of, uh, basically a lot of junk that we're getting. Uh, also, envelopes with padding on the inside and paper on the outside is not something that we can take because it's plastic and paper stuck together. So if you've got two materials stuck together, well, do I sort that as paper? Well, we don't recycle your, your plastic wrap or your plastic, your bubble wrap. So, you know, I can't recycle it over here. And it's not paper because it's actually attached plastic. So just remember we want stuff that's separated off and not 
stuck to each other. <clears throat> Video. Okay. So we, re we process the recycling and of course the trash for Wyndham. And this is how it starts, but there does seem to be a developing trend. So just for fun, the trucks back up, dump off and then leave. This guy takes over from there and he shoves it up onto the conveyor belt, which starts here. It goes through this thing just very, very slowly and carefully to try and separate, you know, the paper stuck to the glass jar or the plastic stuck to the cardboard. And then it comes up the hill here. And the developing trend is wish cycling. So this is the process of throwing questionable items into the recycling bin, hoping they'll be recovered. So I want to recycle this basketball, so I'm going to put it in the recycling bin and they'll know what to do. I heard that shoes can be recycled, so I'm going to put my shoes in the recycling bin and they'll recycle them, right? I want to recycle my sharps because I, I think that they're plastic and they're metal, but it's not a safe thing. The basketball can be given away. The shoes, what was the other one I said in the shoes? Yeah. Was, those can also be given away if they're just so worn down and they got holes in them, that's a trash item. So we have things every day that come in, they're trash, they're reusable, or they're compost, and they come into our recycling building. Well, our machines are set up to take out recycling. They're, they're set up to take recycling out of recycling out of recycling, so everything's all sorted, but we're getting a whole bunch of junk. So this is actually two bales, one, Two, and here's Charlie, he's taking them over to the Waste to Energy building. So recycling building's up here, he was driven down backwards, they're very good at driving, because they can't see forwards because the bales are too big. Oh. And they back in, they dump off these bales, and that, was sh that stuff goes into be burned. So this is stuff that should have been put in the trash or the compost or the, you know, given away um, before it came to the recycling building. And you actually see a lot of plastic film here. Um, you can take plastic film to the grocery stores to be recycled. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. So on the back of one of these items over here, our do don't list, on the back of that, we've got a milk jug guy. And at the bottom of that milk jug, there's plasticfilmrecycling.org. That's a website just like Paint Care that you can type in your zip code and you can find stores nearby you. We can take all your plastic films, your grocery bags, your bread bags, your produce bags, your Ziploc bags, your bubble wrap, the wrapping around the, you know, the, the 24 case of water bottles you bought, the wrapping around your paper towels, the wrapping around your toilet paper. All wrapping the, around like flowers? Take no, that's out? too crinkly. Okay. We're thinking more like squishy Cause plastic. Because I was always, <coughs> excuse me, I'm always like, okay, soft, but what does that really mean? What is soft plastic? Yeah, so you'll, you'll start to notice a, a crinkly, <coughs> so just for funsies, the next time you get a flower wrapped in a uh, 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 bouquet flat wrapping, you know, crinkle it in your ear and then take a plastic bag of any kind, a, a bread bag, produce bag, shopping bag, whatever you want, and crinkle it, you'll start to notice a difference. You'll become a master at the plastic sounds. But in general, follow the, the website's um, uh, examples and you'll do all the right things. So the flower plastic can't be recycled? Correct. Right. It is only trash. Yep. Correct. It's too crinkly. Not that that's a scientific designation, but it's just not something that they can take. Can I just say one? Yeah. I have, there are occasions, maybe at Trader Joe's, I can't remember where, I have gotten flowers that have the number in the triangle. Great question. So there are plastics out there that have a number on them, but we can't take them, uh, nor can the grocery stores. So I don't th I, I think I read somewhere that that little triangle distinction was never meant for your eyes. It was more for like the, the, the behind the scenes industry side of things. So you were never meant to, to, to think, oh, it's got a five on it. I, ha I can recycle it for sure. So that's what, I <laughs> that's what everybody thinks. That's what I thought too. Um, but it's, it's just a matter of, you know, what can we take? If you move to New York, what can they take? If you move to Texas, what can they take? Because unfortunately, recycling is not streamlined across the world. Everywhere has their different machines and they take different things. We can take more than other places. Other places can take more than we can. So, you know, it's, it is very interesting in that aspect. Um, but back to wish cycling, we get some things that are kind of dicey, kind of kind of weird, kind of scary. This is either a hoe uh, for your garden or like a, a, a fireman's ax, yeah. don't know which. But, you know, someone could have used that, right? That could have been used by by you and your garden. You know, if you didn't want it, can you give it away? Um, right here, we've got a bocce ball. 
seemingly innocent, right? But this bocce ball actually was on the floor. It came in someone's recycling load. Someone said, oh, I've got a bocce ball. I'm going to recycle it and hope that they can recycle that for me. And it was on the floor, and a front loader, our big machine with rubber tires, ran over it and actually shot out. So it can be a projectile, which is not really what you want when there's people working around you. So think for another second about that thing that you have in your hand. Can I give this away? If not, can I recycle it? Is it something actually recyclable? And of course, check your list. We also created something fun called the Recyclopedia. It's an online database that you can either access just regularly online or with your smartphone. It's a free download. And there's almost a thousand items in there now. I love that. Isn't it fun? So you can type in pillow. What do I do with it? You can type in orange peel. What do I do with it? You can type in glasses. I've got an old pair of glasses. What can I do with those? You can type in cigarette butt. You can type in over uh, almost a thousand things. That's 975, I think, as of today. So we're getting up there. Um, you, can, you can find out. So we get things that are flammable. When you tap on that propane tank, it's made of metal. So I can recycle it, right? What's inside that propane tank? Explosives. Explosives. Yeah. It's yeah. gas, right? It's <laughs> propane inside there. Yeah. Even if you empty it, it still has a compressed gas left over, so it's actually a little more dangerous than if you actually left some propane in it. So we get fires from propane tanks. There's a human picking out propane tanks, but what if they miss one? What if one's under a cardboard box? So we get fires in our baler because the stuff falls down here, squish, 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 wrapped with wire. Two propane tank fires in this one bale. So we've got someone pick, pick, picking away, but some get through. So the more we get, the less we can take out, only because there's so much. Uh, we've got an oxygen tank right here. Uh, it does have a lovely um, address and, and phone number and everything, but the joke was on me because I called them and they'd gone out of business. Oh. So things like this, you know, oxygen tanks, um, things you need for your health. Make sure you're contacting your local, uh, whoever gave that to you. Say, you know, oh, I've got this oxygen tank. Who can I give it to to properly recycle? If they say take it to your recycling center, like EcoMain, not the right answer. So make sure it goes to the right place, uh, um, either the, the professional place that gave it out or a transfer station can take this safely. And then here's one more for flammable. Uh, this was a white sheet that came in and now it's not so white because it got stuck in our stars. Some friction happened, a little fire happened. Luckily it didn't go up. Uh, they were able to see it, stop it, and, uh, and make sure that they got that out before it's actually caught on fire. Everywhere in the building that there's a human at a sorter station or the control panel, everywhere around the building, there's a stop button. So if they see something go by that's dangerous, they can stop it, you know, safely get it out, make sure everything's good, and then start it again. Um, here's another one that is um, flammable, but I, I need to put it in because it happened in, uh, twice in one month. Once in the recycling and once in the trash building. We got a lithium ion battery, whether it was a computer battery or a little guy uh, from something else. And it starts a fire because when a lithium ion battery is broken open, uh, it, hit, it was hit with our, um, our front loader. The, 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 the bucket hit it, and it, the second that breaks open, there's goo inside, and a chemical reaction starts a fire. That fire cannot be put out with water because it's special chemicals. So here we have a YouTube video screenshot. We put it up on YouTube, so if you want to go find it, EcoMain fire or lithium ion fire, you, we put it up because it's like, hey, this happened, please don't do this, so that we don't have to do this again. So our men were in there, they ran in with their fire extinguishers, how do we call the fire department and sat back and waited? Our building might be gone. So we act quickly if there's an issue. So please don't let us have any more issues by not giving us any gross stuff. And then here's a particularly interesting one. We got four or five giant containers, these are probably this large. Uh, yay, plastic, we can recycle that. But it says corrosive acid on it. And it actually, um, I can't actually, I think I covered it up, but this one has liquid in it. And how do we know if that's water or corrosive acid? So if it has that scary, scary symbol on it, please don't give it to us. Even if it is a beautiful oh, and recyclable those have container. The recycling things on too. They do. They do. Again, the industry, it's not, it's not really for your eyes. So think about what is inside this. Is it dangerous for other people? Because again, we do have people working there. If they get that on their skin, then they have to leave and go to the doctor, which is very good for them, but it's very bad if they get that on, you know, it's, 
it's it's not and safe. What, and what is that symbol? I mean, what is? It's just some sort of uh, it's, it's like acid. Aladdin's, Aladdin's lamp or something. Um, where? Is that on the bottom of? She's wondering about the corrosive. Like, what yeah, would you look for? Right you oh, corrosive. um, I so. believe it's a hand. So this is a hand right here, and I think there's drops falling onto the hand. Normally, when you see like a skull and crossbones oh, okay. or anything like that. Oh, this yeah. You're not going to see this on everyday stuff. This is from a lab or something yeah. weird. So you're probably not going to come into contact with this, but it's just if you happen to have something at home that says danger or poison or corrosive acid or you're going to die if you touch this, please don't give it to us. You can take it to the transfer station. Uh, we get all kinds of inappropriate metals. This very cool sword is from India. It says made in India on it and now it's in my office. Um, so we get, we get random swords. This is not the first sword we've probably gotten a dozen swords uh, in the last 10 years or so. Um, you know, again, give it away, sell it, do something to make sure it doesn't get, get uh, in our facility. Um, and then this over here, this is a, a fire extinguisher that's supposed to be there, but I was on a tour the other day and there was a fire extinguisher that was pulled out. So we didn't get fire extinguishers, but if you tap on it, oh cool, it's made of metal, I can recycle it, right? Not always the case. Uh, but these are just kind of long things. There's like a grill um, thing. There's, there's long curtain rods. There's a, a huge piece of metal right here. It's this very thin metal. Um, there's a piece of like maybe a muffler or a, a car part. There's a, a turning thing. So, you know, maybe some part of an old machine. So just all kinds of just random things. And the people think, ooh, it's made of metal. I can recycle it. And metal is recyclable. Metal is very valuable. But we don't want the random things, especially the things that can get stuck. Steve here is our recycling manager and he is a recycling supervisor. He's about this tall. This is, you know, this tall. So it's, it's taller than me. And I'm not quite sure what it was, but it was a solid hexagonal steel pipe or rod. Um, so had that gone in our machines, it would have broke something for sure. Um, and that would have been thousands, if not more dollars. So. We don't want the bad stuff. You can recycle metal, but the, the metal bins at transfer stations are the place to do that if it's one of those inappropriate metals, as I've done them. How did that long piece get into the recycling in the first place? I mean, in the we, truck? We have these very large things called silver bullets. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, have you right. seen those? They're so just they incredibly large. The, yeah. yeah, they're probably, oh, okay. you know, the size of this wall here. Right, right. And someone put it in when no one was watching, and then it gets to us, dumps on the floor. Maybe it's under something, we don't see it, or we saw it and then we pulled it out and that's what happened. So, yeah, I'm actually pretty sure this one was one of the ones we saw and pulled out because it would not have gone through even the first steps without getting stuck in something. Uh, we get general garbage. So you might think, oh, it's no big deal. I'm just gonna put my garbage in there, but it is a big deal because it makes the recycling dirty and contaminated even you know, much grosser than we're even thinking about it being allowed to. So there's a lot of food waste smeared on something black that's also not recycling. Maybe a car seat. Uh, there's a pillow from a couch here. There are two different pairs of shoes, maybe three different pairs of shoes here. An electrical cord of some kind. A really comfortable looking seat for a car. I would have taken that from Goodwill. Uh, we've got here some sort of a sleeping bag looking thing. A piece of um, maybe a DVD player or other computer component. You can see the back of that here. And then um, a, maybe a dress or a, a shirt, a purple, a nice purple thing here. Looks like nice fabric, a belt, and leaves. Because why, why not put leaves in your recycling bin? So those are general things that we don't want. They're not scary explosive, but they're not good. So making sure that you're putting in the plastic containers, the metal, the glass, the uh, paper, and the cardboard are the things that we want and that we need to recycle the right way. But if we get all the other junk, we're more focused on taking the trash out than we are sorting the right stuff. And how about, I mean, some towns do the comp have yeah. outside composting, don't they? Yes. And, and does Eco Maine do that if, if, if they get the contract? Yeah, um, we don't really do that. We have the, the area to hold it. Oh, okay. But we, one, we don't haul anything, so we're never on the road bringing th stuff to us. Oh. We um, contract with Triano. Casella, Pine Tree, you've probably all seen a truck oh, yeah. with a name on the side. Yes. You name it, yeah. you know, that hauler sometimes takes it to us. Yeah. Now, places like Manchester School here in Wyndham, they have their stuff brought to us, but it's a separate company that comes to us yeah. and then their company takes it away when there's enough of it. So in the future, 
in the next two, five, ten years, we are looking about uh, doing some sort of food collection system, but we're not there yet, yeah. for sure. But we want to be. And we also, of course, say compost, compost, compost in your backyard, curbside, transfer station, however you can, do it because it's a really great thing. And there's community gardens here. I mean, I, they have a compost bin, but yeah. not for the public, just for their folks. Maybe. For their folks, yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's also vermicomposting, which is composting with worms, which is really fun. Oh, yeah. You ever thought about that or heard about I've that? that. Yeah, that. so it's basically a bin in your kitchen, in your basement, yeah. in your closet, wherever you want to put it in your house. You can put it outside in the, in the um, non-freezing months, uh, but you don't want to make the worms too hot or too cold. Uh, but it's very interesting. If you want more information, I'm happy to talk more, but it's vermicomposting, composting with worms. So after all that stuff, you've got to consider the safety aspect. This is a picture of the humans climbing in to cut junk out of the stars. So here's one of those stars here. This is the paper sorting area. The paper is pushed up and over onto a belt and therefore separating out the paper. Glass metal and plastic falls through. The cardboard by this stage has been taken out over here. So they've stopped the machine, locked it in place, and you see there's a couple black ones here on a black axle. That's what you should be seeing. But of course, you see every other color of the rainbow up there right now because they haven't cut everything out. Uh, we've got some twine or some wire here. We've got plastic bags right here. We've got looks, what looks like that long paper that comes in some packages that's kind of wrapped around all the packaging. And you might say, well, it's paper. That's good. I can recycle it. But if you get that, please just kind of rip in sections. It could be this big. It could be this big. But, you know, stuff like this, it will get tangled. Uh, here's what looks like to be a very lovely flannel shirt. I'd love to buy that for my husband, but I can't because it's stuck in a machine. Um, and this is going back to that plasticfilmrecycling.org. This is just a lot of plastic. You can't recycle these types of bags um, or these, but you can do some of the others. I just took a random um, picture of all the plastics that I had uh, in my recycling bin. So plasticfilmrecycling.org is the place where you can take those air pockets, that bubble wrap, uh, things like produce bags or like carrot bags. Um, your Ziploc bags and things like that. So look on that website for more guidance there. Because of course the manual sorting happens, the humans happen, uh, are, are in there, and you know we got to get that contamination out, but where does it start? At home. You know We at home have to do a good job before it gets to we at EcoMaine so that we at EcoMaine can do our job the right way. Um, so this is the process of how it happens. We'll go through it, not too quickly, but somewhat quickly. Um, but the trucks, they come and they dump off. The front loader shoves it up onto the machine. Remember that video we watched of how it was pushing it up? And now it's up here. It goes through our system. These are the, uh, some of the stars. There are different types of stars. This here is separating out the cardboard. So I know it's a little blurry. There's a, a video of it in just a second. But the material goes up that hill after it's pushed onto the belt. It comes down onto the top of the large stars. They're about this big versus these stars that are paper stars around this big. So all these stars on axles are taking the cardboard and it's kind of riding, surfing up and over and falls down into its own bin, goes onto a belt and falls downstairs. The little things, glass, metal, plastic, paper, and small cardboard falls down through and goes through a white room. After that white room, it goes to the paper sorting. So the stuff goes up and then it's pushed up and up and up onto the paper sorting screen. That comes back through that same white room. That's where the humans are picking out the trash. The paper goes downstairs to be bailed. And here is the process. The materials are coming down. They're being bounced by the stars. Small stuff falling through. Hi. Large things going up and over. So even plastic containers go up and over, and that's okay. We can pull that out. And you want the cardboard boxes broken up, right? If you're able to, that would be great. And, and that's because, one, they go through our machines better, and two, they fit on the truck better. So we don't want you to take, you know, don't take your time and, and pull the tape off. Don't pull the staples out, you know, don't pull, you know, the addresses or anything. Just break it down as much as you're able to, and that's really great. Um, so here is your uh, magnets for your metal. So steel and tin, or ferrous metal, and aluminum, non-ferrous metal. Two types of magnets take out two different types of material. Uh, this big circle thing right here, that's our magnet. 
So the stuff is actually, this is the back end of it. So it's grabbed, brought over to a bin and thrown. Grabbed, thrown. I'll show a video in a second to show that. And then right here, this is our reverse eddy current magnet. So stuff is pushed away. So instead of being grabbed up, it's pushed. Because non-ferrous will not, of course, attract to a regular magnet. So we use a reverse eddy current magnet to push it. So you think, see things just being grabbed up. They come on this side and they're thrown over here. So it's just a constant, constant throw. So this is anything from your spaghetti sauce jars, tops, not, not the bottoms because they're made of glass, to your soup cans, to you know that random piece of metal you put in there. If it's not too big, you know we can take that. Um, to, to tops here, you can see it's a very strong magnet. Sometimes we do pry that off, but it's not in the way of anything, so we don't worry about it too much unless there's too much of it. This so is the cup, you say not the covers of the glass? No, this does take it, yes. Okay. So that's the type of thing it will pick up. Mm -hmm. And then here, see how stuff is being thrown into the, the basin, the, 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 the hole over there? That is things being pushed over the void. Everything else is falling down, so we've got another separation there. See that happening? Is that styrofoam? No, that is paper that you're seeing, the white stuff. Yeah, I'm just wondering why the stuff is being pushed over. Oh, is it's, the, it's the, the pushing force. mechanism, yes. So instead of being grabbed like a regular magnet, the reverse eddy current magnet oh, yeah. creates that okay. repelling action. Okay. So when that, um, that can gets to it, it doesn't want to be next to it. So it immediately pushes away from it. So when the glass, <coughs> when the glass jars go in with the metal caps screwed mm -hmm. on, Somebody have to actually manually take that off. Let's we'll talk about that now. Okay. So say you've got that spaghetti sauce jar, top on, nice and tight. That's okay. It goes through our glass breaking screen. It's like a giant room where the glass is broken. We break the glass and then we crush it into a, a size that you can uh, touch and not get cut. Uh, and then we reuse that in multiple things like countertop. I was in uh, South Portland High School today. Their whole floor on their stairs is made of recycled glass, really neat. So it can be used in lots of different ways. You can also fill in potholes with it, fill it up with glass, and then cover it over with pavement. Uh, we use it at our, at our landfill too to fix all the potholes, even though we don't use pavement out there. Um, it's, it's a valuable resource, and it's free because there's zero market for recycling glass. So we tend to reuse it, um, and it's, it's just a free resource. So these are the, um, the, 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 the stars there are made of metal instead of, of, of rubber, like these. These are rubber. So the glass is broken as it's going over this. The glass will break. The top will keep bouncing around, come out the other side, and then anything left on the belt at the end goes through again. So then the magnet will get it. So it's your choice. Leave them on or take them off and put them both in the bin. Thank you. Okay? Can I ask one similar question about yeah. the plastics? Like if you have a, a Windex. Yes. So the part that's the squirter. We don't want the ch -ch -ch yeah. because it's got metal inside there. Yeah. Plus it's not a container. It's, if it's, say you've got a shampoo bottle, it's just a screw on, or a lotion bottle, it's just a screw on, we'll take that. So plastic can stay on plastic there, but if it's like a squirt bottle. But it's got the spritzer thing. Yeah, know? we don't want the ch, -ch or even like the pump bottle. Yeah. Because it's got metal, <clears throat> excuse me, inside of there. But if you throw that part away, you can take the rest. Oh yeah, of the yeah, the rest absolutely, take, yeah. yes, yes. All right, next one, great. Uh, so this is our machine to sort out the number ones. So it's things like your drinking bottles, and yes, please redeem as much as possible. Um, you know, if you if you get all those cans and bottles and things, redeem them if you're if you're able to. If you're not, we'll take them. We recycle them just perfectly fine. Um, so number one plastic is one thing that's taken out with a machine. And here's my example. I've got number one plastic. There's that that triangle. Just in case you're curious, you can look it up. And this machine is looking down. It's got kind of like robot eyes. It's an optical sorter, so it's sorting optically with its eyes. It's looking down on all the plastic going under it. It only sees number one. So it sees it, follows it, blows a little puff of air. So it goes up and over. Everything else falls straight down. So it's rejecting that. It is accepting it. Oh, I, I guess you can think of it as rejecting it because it's blowing it away, yeah. but it's just blowing it to the right place. Okay. So it's instead of yeah. making it just go down. And some containers will have the marking on the top, mm -hmm. and it's connected. I think I have one here. But um, 
So they, they get separated sometimes. So how does the machine know? Just by the just by the they? chemical makeup. Okay. So this machine okay. is reading. Okay. What the plastic is actually yeah. made of. It's not reading the little triangle. Okay. It's yeah. reading the chemical That's makeup, so what the plastic is actually made of. Because number one is made of something chemically different than number two. Number two is very different from number three. Number three is different from number four, and on and on. So it's reading what type of plastic it is and only seeing the number one because we said you're programmed to read number one. And then that's separated out and goes in its own bin. We'll see that video now. These machines must cost a lot. This is a quarter of a million dollars. And that's why we only have one. So this is looking away, and we're about to turn around and look towards the... There's all the material coming in. See the light? That's what's reading it. And just a millisecond later, look. Everything else going down, some stuff going up. Everybody see that? Wow. Yeah, it's very quick. Now, question for you. Pretend I had the top on this. You can absolutely leave plastic on plastic. I just happen to lose the top of this. Pretend I have the top on this and it's this much juice in there. Can I recycle this? Dump the juice out. You can drink or dump, but you cannot give us material with liquid in it because can this... It's, it's way too heavy. So it will just fall straight down and then go into the room. And I'm sorry, but no one's in that room going, oh, I'm going to recycle this done. So we don't have time for that, unfortunately. So we require you at home to drink it, water a plant, pour it down the sink, whatever you'd like to do. Just make sure everything you give us empty. That's the same for your soup cans, same for your milk, same for your glass, even your pie. The aluminum foil. Yes, we can take this, but we don't want it. We, we don't want any pie in there. We don't want your your the stuffing chicken, or whatever in there. I want it, <laughs> but I can't recycle it. How's that? <laughs> so we can't recycle food waste. So make sure everything is em you know empty. Yeah. It's sure. delicious. Eat it up or or compost it if you can. You don't have to clean it. You do have to empty it out. So think of peanut butter jars, right? Yeah. How do you ever get those clean? Well, you don't have to. Take a knife, get whatever you're able to out, and then give it to us. So you don't have to clean it, you don't have to soak it, you don't have to scrub it. Clean it out with a knife. Think about yogurt, clean it out with that spoon. Eat it, and then recycle it. Don't worry about washing anything. Don't waste your time, don't waste your water. Just make sure it's empty. So that's mostly because of weight. It needs to be mostly empty because of weight. Contamination or residue. Okay. We don't want high residue amounts in the materials because what is the next place supposed to do with that peanut butter left yeah. over? So they do wash everything really, really well. But if you leave this much peanut butter in there, imagine how oily that is. Right. So it's going to mess up the washing process. So we cannot recycle, nobody can recycle in the world, recycle stuff in your containers. So it must be empty. The, the number one, that's because of weight. Everything else is because it's just dirty. Yeah. Plus there's other... Okay. Oh, absolutely. A little bit is totally fine. Yeah. Well, so... What did you uh, a little bit. Yeah, and Sorry. there's a difference between residue, <coughs> which is a little bit, residue. and contamination, which yeah. is like yeah. half the stuff left in there. Okay? Um, so some stuff left in there, some, some, some residue is totally fine, but not a whole lot, okay? Um, so finally, manual sorting process. Everything else is sorted by humans. We're sorting out the natural from the colors, and then the three through sevens are all in one bin. So the plastics are sorted into four different bins. And then from there, it goes on a conveyor belt, one material at a time. So right now this is cardboard, for example. Uh, these are also bins, one, two, three, right here. So whenever that belt is clean, or sorry, uh, uh, empty, um, and, and you know doesn't have any material on it, maybe the milk jugs are then ready to be built. So they'll radio down and say, all right, are you ready for another material? Milk jugs, go. And they open up the door, goes out onto the belt, goes downstairs, squish, 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 and it gets bailed. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So here are our uh, bales of cardboard. Up here you'll see bales of plastic. Over here there's bales of metal. Actually over there there's bales of metal. These are our plastics. The picture is backwards. Wow. And so stuff comes down. Squish, squish, squish. You see the lines on there? Wrap it with wire. Wire is made in Tennessee. Metal wire, we use about two miles a day. And then someone on the floor, like Richard here, is going to inspect it. He's making sure it's good enough. 
clean oh, enough. That's he's rolling it back and forth. Exactly. He's looking at things. He's looking at all sides. If he sees anything that he doesn't like, what is he going to do? Pull it out. Roll it over to the trash. Open up the bale. Pull it out. <laughs> if he sees a ton on the outside, a lot of junk, that means, oh man, there's something wrong with the sorting. There's a lot on the inside. He picks it up, brings it around front, cuts it open, sends it through again. If he sees only a couple things, he'll pull those couple things out and then he'll put it either in the pile, cardboard's kept inside because we don't want it to get rained on, or he puts it on a truck, which is just conveniently located for our movie here. Now what do you do with things like mattresses? And Trash. Trash. We burn them. burn them. In a very clean way, of course. But Maine does not have a mattress recycling law. Some places do but we don't. And then large equipment like refrigerators and stores. We put them to the side yeah. in our waste energy facility and then we send them off to a special place that has all the has that, materials yeah. and, and machines that they need to do that. So from there, it goes off to make brand new things. So uh, think of that cardboard bale. It'll go on the cardboard truck and it'll go to the next place, which is typically New York or Massachusetts. They'll get taken off the truck. The wires will be cut. They'll be kind of pulped up or washed in water and, and other uh, cleaning solutions and pulped up and then through many processes be squished down into a shoe box or a Captain Crunch box or um, you know even that little trident gum box so anything like that. Um, cardboard can also make and also paper can also make like your berry boxes for your strawberries in the summer uh, even kitty litter and uh, you know just general paper newspaper magazines all kinds of things your metal can th make things like bike parts, car parts, new cans, appliances, so new washing machine. Um, and then your plastic can make things like uh, plastic lumber, play sets, new bottles, frisbees, stadium seats, etc. For fun, I just brought a frisbee made out of recycled material. Of course, it looks exactly like a normal frisbee, so you'd never know. So recycled material, or uh, items made out of recycled material, are just the same, if not a lot cooler, than stuff made from just fresh petroleum. So buy recycled whenever you can. Here's a place of plastic lumber. This is from uh, milk jugs. So lots of milk jugs went into making this. And to prove it to you, here's your fake homework. You have as many years as you want to do this and you don't have to, but here's a playground in South Portland oh, yeah. at a place called Willard Beach. Has anyone ever been there? Yeah. 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 Take your dog if you have one. It's the most fun you'll have all day. <laughs> so this says, this play structure is made from the equivalent of 8,923 plastic containers like milk jugs, 13,847 aluminum cans right oh here. My gosh and 9,294 soup cans. So this whole playground was made out of material that you and I hopefully recycle every day. If we put it in the trash can, no playgrounds are made, no bike parts are made, no frisbees are made, no stadium seats are made because they get burned. They go in the landfill. They make a little bit of electricity, yay! But then we have to go out and get our fresh material. So why can't things like water bottles, you know, let's say Pond Spring or anything, why can't they be reused again as water bottles without having to be crunched and run? And Eventually that plastic, especially such thin plastic, okay. will break down. Okay. And you don't really want plastic breaking down on no. you, especially from something that you drink. Yeah. Yeah. So get a get a, a reusable one. Here's a metal one right here made out of aluminum cans. I have a Camelback. It's made out of nice thick plastic. You've got one right there. So uh, bringing your own water bottle is, is really well, wonderful. That's what I have for events, you know. I mean, having a, a some, you know, like here they have events and then yeah. they have water bottles, but they're going to be recycled. Okay, that's good, but can you still bring your own water bottle to an event like this and go to the bathroom and it fill it up? Of it, yeah. yeah. Good. I happen to bring one everywhere I go, especially yeah. a um, yeah. coffee mug because I will not allow myself to get a hot chocolate or a coffee unless I have my own mug. Right. So you train yourself really fast because yeah. you know you want that coffee. <laughs> and if you can't get it, you're very sad. So the next time you make sure you bring it. Same idea with the grocery store. I, I won't go to the grocery store unless I have my bag. So otherwise I'm just carrying everything out. So we want you to recycle. But we want you to recycle the oh, right way. He's been through it, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's aged. So just super quick, paper, yay. Oh, sorry. Paper, no. 
So we don't want your toilet paper, we don't want your wax paper, we don't want your tissues, and that's because there's not enough, the, the, the fibers are not long enough. Mm -hmm. It's not because there's junk on there, even though you know, we don't want to recycle your junk, you know, nobody wants your boogers. But the fibers are just not long enough to make something new again, so these are definitely just, no. Saran wrap? Always no. No. Yep, we want plastic containers, yeah. and they do have to have a label. Uh, these are the good metals. These are the bad metals, big scary things that can get stuck. Um, ACs, obviously very bad. Good glass, any container like this could be up to five gallons. Probably not gonna have five gallons of wine or you know whatever, but we can take glass up to five gallons. Glass nose. So light bulbs, um, like uh, your windshield glass, so if you break a windshield, please don't give us that glass. It's not what we want. Uh, your mirrors, your ceramics, window glass, our nose. Plastic yays, so all containers, one through seven, doesn't matter how, what size it is. It could be you know, a little yogurt cup this big or a big five gallon bucket. Doesn't matter, as long as it's a container with a number or symbol on the bottom or side or top. But no covers. You can have t covers, so plastic can stay on plastic. Okay. It's your choice if you want glass and metal together. Um, these are some don'ts, so we got styrofoam, peanuts. These are the things right here. One, two, three, four, even your wood pellet bags that can go back to the grocery store. Not everything can, so remember, check plasticfilmrecycling.org. But these are the things you can crush in your hand. We don't want those things you can crush in your hand. We want the hard containers. Other no's, we got food, electronics, scary, dangerous, um, li uh, lighter fluid and things, knives, sharps, rope, clothes, propane tags, batteries. Some of these things might be a little bit innocent, like what's wrong with having a shoe? Well, nothing's wrong with having one shoe, but we get dozens of shoes. So obviously very dangerous and scary stuff in there. Other don'ts, we have gotten snakes before, we have gotten chainsaws before, we have gotten Christmas trees before, all kinds of stuff, so don't give us those things. Okay? Um, so very cu last couple slides, we have that recyclopedia. You can look things up online. So yeah, all in all, your trash, if you remove the reusable items and give those to whoever you can, if you remove the recycling and put that on the curb so we can take it and turn it into something new, if you remove the food waste if you're able to and compost that if you can, you're going to have a healthier environment, a reduction in resources consumed to make brand new products, and also less municipal dollars spent for disposal. So there's no downside to recycling, except you at home have to think, does this go in the trash or the recycling bin? And do you like the gallon uh, plastic like milk cartons? Do you like them crunched? You don't have to. That's not something that we ask you to do. If you love no, stepping I mean, on stuff, go for it. More room no, I, I would say don't worry about that. If okay. you had giant boxes, yeah. yes, break them down. But you know, milk jugs and, and things like that are not a problem. Uh, so please find us on social media if you would like to. We post really interesting events and pictures and, and videos and things all the time. And last slide, questions. I know I got two minutes over, but yeah, that's pretty good for- your last name? That's my question. Miss Van Huysen. Mm -hmm. So it's actually Boussier Van Huysen because I just got married, uh -huh. um, but it's Dutch. Yeah, Dutch. Okay, we're trying to guess. Yeah. Van <laughs> yeah. Questions? What is a kid yelling for candy? Well, he, the, there's a glass recycling bin, a paper recycling bin, and he's a candy recycling bin. Oh. So you can put your candy oh, right in there and he'll yes. take it. <laughs> If you have questions, I am, again, reachable by email or by phone. Um, always happy to answer them. Even if you just say, oh, I've got this thing, you know, give me a call and, and I can tell you in 30 seconds what the answer is. Or, of course, go to the Recyclopedia and you can learn it even faster. No. And what about soup and coffee cups now? I heard because they have a wax lining in the cup. So it's not wax, it's plasticized. Okay. So if you take that cup, pretend this is, actually, I got one right here. Take it and... Run your fingernail down, inside and out. There's zero wax. And you don't want that? We, uh, we can take no wax, so this is good. This is a very good thing. Okay. No wax, good. If I've got wax, you always can feel, bad. see the, the, the You can, yes, yeah, so yeah, you're gonna. This is one that has two. Let's see. So that's okay, we'll take that. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. No, no styrofoam. Styrofoam classic No thing. styrofoam, no, unfortunately. Just, yeah. Because it has that, doesn't. It's polystyrene, so yeah. it's just not recyclable because there's no market for it. And just like no black line. That's okay, we can take that because your fingernail will not get anything. Okay. It's a plastic like layer. This. That's a no because you can squish it in your hand if you really wanted to. Yeah. It's not what we call rigid. That's, that's trash. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Always trash. I use those two for my smoothies. Always trash because it's got um, metal top, plastic bottom, and coffee grounds inside of it. So also too small. I love it. Um, you could take off the, the paper, okay. but we don't want that bump, that bubble wrap, that okay. or that bubble pack. Yeah. So say you buy a new screwdriver and that plastic's holding it on, that's but not something that we want. The paper will take, sure. yes, but the, the, the plastic, I know. Uh, that can go back to the grocery store. So any bags like that can go to the grocery store. Oh, you mean in their recycling bin? Exactly, in their recycling bin. So Hannaford, Shaw's, Walmart, Target, yeah. Whole Foods, Bed Bath & Beyond, some transfer stations, they have those bins. All that is trash. The, the tube and that squishy plastic there, all of that crinkly is trash. And the tube would be... Uh, the tube is unfortunately trash. We don't take okay. tubes. Okay. Yes. Like some bags you get, like maybe, I'm not sure if it's Marshall's, but they're a little bit... Thicker? Heavy, yeah. They have the number. Yep. Yeah. They can take those, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Shopping oh. bags are okay too. Yeah. 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 Potentially not. Um, <laughs> go to plasticfilmrecycling.org and check out their list. And that will give you a great idea of what they can take. Um, I, I will say wood pellets is on there because I emailed them and asked them. Uh, but they have to be, the bag has to be turned inside out, shaken, and then turned in back inside out. Because they don't want to recycle your pellets or your dust, right? Right. Well, in respect for your time, I'd like to let you go, but please come over and get a straw and a bag and a pencil made of recycled newspaper. So Put your email list, uh, email address down so we can add you to our list. We only send out maybe 15 emails per year, so it's not like a bothering you every day thing. And there's brochures about what to recycle, what not to recycle, the process, as well as trash and all about us. So thank you very much for coming and have a great night. Awesome.